favor and introduce me. I'm Leila from Iran. Uh, I'm lecturer at uh, part-time lectures at T University, and my field of interest in sustainability, building materials, and beam, and uh, the related area. Um, uh, sustainability actually is a very, very wide and vast area, and as we know, it has got three pillars, base points, economic, social, and environmental. It has got lots of factors and criteria under each of them. Uh, the discussion for today is environmental uh, sustainability in Iranian architecture, traditional Iranian architecture, and specifically on climatic consideration. And our focus is on one of the cities, uh, the, one of the famous cities and ancient cities in Iran, that is Yazd. Um, this is the map of Iran. and. Iran is, um, you know, from the north and the south, we have got two um, uh, waterway, uh, Khazar and also Persian Gulf, and uh, different climate, four main climate in Iran. From, on the top, we have got temperate climate, and on uh, north and uh, northwest, we have got cold and mountainous climate, and here, Oh, I cannot move, yeah? <laughs> Let me put it here. Okay, on this part, we've got humid and also hot. And most of the part of Iran, especially on the center, we've got hot and arid climate. This city of Yazd is located here in the middle. As Dr. Uh, Professor Fellahi uh, explained, Bam is uh, 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 again in the center and uh, in the same uh, climate area. And yes, it is an important center of Persian architecture, actually. Okay, uh, I told you um, the temperature sometimes reaches over 40 centigrade, centigrade. Uh, and uh, some months of the year, the humidity is very, very low and sometimes even near to 0% uh, relative humidity. And also we have got wind, cold and dry wind at night. So uh, in the day, we've got hot weather and at night we've got cold and with uh, some, somehow harsh wind. So in this special and specific context, uh, our ancient and old uh, architects from the past has devised novel sustainability techniques and solutions to come over this harsh context. And in this macro uh, harsh climate, they have made some micro pleasant environment and climate. Uh, there are lots of solutions and techniques if I want to explain it, but just I have selected some parts because if I want to talk about it, it's, it takes a lot of time and hours and hours for that. Um, first of all, the structure of the city, um, the shape of the city, uh, it's linear shape and it's, uh, it has made uh, around bazaar. Bazaar in Iran is a kind of market. But not uh, those markets like, for example, Europe. Informal markets, everything is around. For example, uh, people go, busy market. It's not just for buying and selling. It's also a place for social um, communication. People go there to see each other, to talk to each other, to uh, tell uh, each other about the everyday life. So uh, the uh, growing and the a uh, city actually spreading is over the uh, bazaar and all the roads and the streets then uh, spread from the main bazaar. And look, this is a kind of the picture you can see is bazaar, but not the busiest time. Um, as you may see from this picture, it's a, a view, an aerial view of all the city. It is a very, very dense city. And all the uh, buildings are packed together. This is, it has got environmental 
um, uh, solutions, environmental actually issues uh, under that. Let's look at it, yeah. Uh, one of them is because we have got wind and, uh, and also uh, bad sunlight. So if the buildings are near together and they are in, uh, more compact to each other, then the sunlight uh, is not over the all the envelope, all the sides of the building. So some parts of the building gain the direct the, the solar radiation. And also it has got some narrow, irregular and uh, curved sidewalks and roads. The roads are not straight. That is also, it has got environmental issues because of the sun and also the wind. Because if the way and the side lines uh, walks are straight, then the wind goes straight and uh, it doesn't make a good environment, micro environment for the pedestrian, for the people that are walking there. So the areas and the sidewalks are curved, narrow, and also irregular. Um, one of the things, uh, environmental solutions for this um, sidewalks and roads that you will see on the next um, uh, slide is Sabat. In Iran, in Iranian language, we say Sabat. But what is Sabat? Sabat is a roofed or vaulted area in alleys and sidewalks. As you may see, um, this, these are the sidewalks and the roads I told you, narrow and um, uh, curved, and these are Sabats. It's a kind of roofed, vault, vaulted roofs, uh, covered roofs on the roads, and also it has got environmental issues uh, behind it because of uh, the sunlight and also because of the um, wind, and it makes also uh, some parts, for example, around the houses, it's got some platforms, and uh, uh, for example, housewives or the people in the houses, sometimes they come out of the houses and they talk together with the neighbor. Again, it has got some social uh, aspect behind that. And beside that, look at it, these kinds of sabot, it makes a very, very pleasant and aesthetic uh, shadow and light. So it is functional and also it satisfies the needs of aesthetic and um, also environmental solutions. As well, it has got also a structural uh, functional, uh, function. Uh, this, this is a sidewalk and we have got two buildings here and here. And this one connects, it means it gets the two buildings. It has got a structural function, uh, a kind of structural function and usability. Okay, another thing is about the city orientation. I told you about that and about the alleys. The orientation, again, is uh, in the way that um, it, it, uh, it is the most compatible with the environmental uh, context there. Domes. We see a lot of domes in Yazd uh, city. Uh, because of lots of reasons, first of it, it receives less direction sunlight. When the roof is straight, so it gets a lot of sun uh, radiation and uh, sun uh, uh, solar gain. But when the dome is, when the roof is domed and curved, every time some parts of the domes is, is in the shaded area, uh, is in shadow, and uh, so the temperature of the roof. Uh, doesn't get that much high, especially in the summer day uh, uh, in noon. Uh, and also, uh, dome has got high, uh, the height of the domes are a lot, you know, uh, when we compare to the roof. And this high, um, this uh, height make the uh, warm and hot air goes up inside and the cooler uh, atmosphere, the cooler um, uh, air can be uh, uh, for the users at users um, uh, level. Um, 
you can see some of the pictures. And also inside the domes, we've got lots of decorations. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, sometimes we have got on the, uh, some domes, especially I will explain it for you for the entrance. We have got some lightings here. We call it Horno uh, for getting some light in it. Uh, main material of the city is, yes, is uh, uh, among the cities. Then when, when you, you look at it uh, from, uh, you know, the city horizon, you can see a very, very compatibility in color. You know, the uh, color that you see doesn't, um, it makes sense. For example, it doesn't annoy the eye. It's really pleasant. And the material that is used for the city is mud, clay, and adobe. Um, adobe has got some uh, uh, fabric um, uh, substances, for example, for uh, strengthening the material. Uh, we have got some components of sustainable traditional architecture in Yazd. There are lots of them, but I have selected some of them for you because uh, the time is limited. One of them is courtyard, Senoral Coat Courtyard. I will explain it for you later, but just the names, Senoral Coat Courtyard. In the courtyard, we have got pool and garden, basement that we call it Sardob in Persian, in our language. And wind catcher. Yes, is the city of wind catchers and is recognized by UNESCO, uh, holding a recognition from UNESCO for uh, being that. Um, and also, we have got entrance, as I told you. Um, in Farsi, we call it Hashti. And this is the lighting from the dome that I told you. Uh, we call it Horno. And Ivan, some kind of balcony, but it is not balcony. We call it Ivan or Avon in Farsi. Uh, courtyard creates a very, very self-sufficient microclimate, acts as a passive cooling strategy. In the courtyard, we have got ponds, water, pool, and also a lot of garden. So it makes this air fresh and cool, and the hot, uh, air can go upstairs and pass the building. So here in the courtyard, this is a traditional building in Iran. We have got two courtyards. This area, we have got micro uh, atmosphere, a, a very pleasant micro atmosphere. You can see in isometric perspective, you know, these are two courtyards. And uh, the building is located around the courtyard. The courtyard is in the center and the building is around it. And uh, actually, it's a focal point, uh, in, in the, uh, especially in Yazd architecture and in some parts of Iran. Um, as I said, uh, also uh, pool and ponds and uh, gardens that make a very, very fresh and cool air. These are uh, traditional houses uh, Iranian houses in Yaz city. Another component is Hashti. This is again that house. The, this house is named Gerami House in Yaz, and here is the entrance. Uh, one of the reasons that the in, it is here, Hashti or entrance, and it is really, really beautiful. One of the reasons is that because Iranian people are hospital people, and they want to welcome their guests. For example, some guests, they come to their house, but they do not want to enter the room. They just want to talk, and for example, they have got some kind of work. They stand here, but Iranian and traditional architects make this part beautiful aesthetic and a pleasant place for the guests that just coming inside the house and um, um, uh, it's just like a lobby uh, for the guests and also with dome with horn no the lighting outside and shadow and uh, light from uh, the roof Iwan we can see here anyone. 
What is even is we have got closed areas, uh, open areas, and this is a semi closed area, not closed and not open, something, a transition between the uh, closed to uh, open areas. And um, uh, especially it is around, it is located most of the time around the central courtyard. Um, uh, also it is uh, a, kind of a kind of solution for improving energy performance because it's a kind of shading device. For example, when we have got sun, especially in the summer, it's, it's a kind of shading, and so the windows are in safety from the sun radiation. And also, it's a kind of multifunctional places, because in Iranian traditional people, uh, the family members used to come out in the evenings, and they have some tea, for example, with the family together. Then they came here, and they, for example, pour some glasses of tea and they had together uh, with, for example, some nuts, we call it ajil, for example, in Iran, tea or, for example, some, something like this for their uh, evenings. Yeah, I can see also they are decorated, some of them are vaulted, some of them are, for example, they have got arches, uh, different forms. Uh, uh, on that slide, even the, uh, this, for example, the pool and the garden, it is formed according to the culture, the number of people of that family. It can be changed and designed. Uh, it, actually, it was designed uh, for the family, for the special family that wanted to live there. And colorful uh, beautiful glasses for windows. It's not just for aesthetic part, but also to limit the amount of light that is coming because it is a hot and dry area. Uh, and yes, and wind catchers. In Farsi, we say badgir, uh, and it is very, very famous. Uh, it creates a, an environmental and sustainable energy system for air circulation and cooling purposes. Uh, it has got different forms. Uh, one sided, for example, means it has got one openings. Four sided, eight sided, it depends on the direction of wind and, um, and on the context and on the city and the architects the ancient architect designed this special kind of bodgi wind catcher for that specific city. For example, here, look, the, all the openings are from this part. It means it has got a pleasant and the good wind is from this direction. And this bodgi catch the, uh, the hot air. And in the next slide, you can see the function. Uh, the air comes down. And uh, most of the time, sometimes we have got a pool, ponds here, water. And uh, because of uh, evaporation, cooling evaporation, the wind, the hot wind gets cooler and colder, fresh, and enters the house. And it's like a, a cooler, but not mechanical cooler. It's just a natural ventilation with pleasant wind and air. Um, another one, I think it's the last or one of the last ones, we call it sardob or basement. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is grounded and it is digged under the ground, sometimes, for example, 60 meters under the ground. And it is connected to the water canals of the city. And uh, when the canals, for example, passes the, the building, then the water can come to each person's house, sardob, basement. And also, this sardob can be connected to wind catcher for the um, uh, cool air, for, getting, for making the hot uh, wind uh, cool. Uh, yeah, and cannot, cannot, or the water reserve walk. That, that water in the basement and sardob comes from there. It means that everything in the past, they have got uh, functional and aesthetic design 
architect designed each details of these uh, monuments and these details and uh, archi architectural buildings. Uh, but now, we have got today, we have got ab absence of vernacular uh, methods and architecture uh, also in Iran, you know, also in Iran, also in Tehran. Um, actually, we have a very, very good history in this environmental solutions, but what about uh, um, construction, new constructions today? How, how, what should they do? This, is this a kind of question? How should we, for example, uh, make the good things from the past and update it and use it in the context of today? Um, uh, thanks for watching. This is my email and also my telephone number. And uh, you should see Iran by your eyes, actually. And before finishing, I have a very, very short video. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure if you listen. Thank you a lot and thanks for, for your time.